The greatest threat to the security of the people of North Korea comes from the government of North Korea itself. Ari Fresher. North Korea is a very isolated place, giving it the name of the Hermit Nation, since it has almost no connections to the outside world, other than in its own country. It has many famines in the last hundred years, and it has been the center of attention for a while due to its lack of human rights, immoralism, and complete isolation from the world around it. Some of these human rights violations include, but are not limited to, all human beings are born free and equal to dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Another is, no one shall be held in slavery or servitude, slavery, and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. No one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degraded treatment or punishment. Which these are most commonly violated by their government, which is the DPRK, or as called by their government, the Democratic Republic's People of Korea. They also don't let many people in, since they don't really want to show the world what's really happening there, and those that do come in and are allowed have to be guided everywhere, and make sure that they don't see or do something that they don't want them to do. And North Korea's history is, well, quite recent. The first time North Korea was ever united was in 668 AD by the Silla Dynasty. It lasted until 1910 when J Japan uh, started colonizing Korea. Many Koreans memorized it as a harsh time and brutal time under Japanese control where there was many mass murderings and rapings and caused many revolutions that mostly failed. This period finally ended in 1945 when Japan was defeated in World War II. The land was split, split, uh, split between the Soviet Union and the United States of America. The, the divide was only supposed to be temporary, but then the Cold War came along and made tensions rise. There were attempts to bring both sides together, but they didn't trust each other enough to do so. Eventually, the United States gave control over to Syngman Rhee on the south side of Korea, while the Soviet Union gave control to Kim Il-sung over to the North Korea. In 1948, both sides claimed to be legitimate government and representative of the entire North Korean people, with Simgim Rhee in South Korea claiming this first in August 15th, and Kim Il-sung from North Korea claiming the same thing in September 8th. Eventually, Kim Il-sung wanted all North Korea under his control and tried to take it by force, starting the Korean War between South Korea and North Korea. This war had many effects on its citizens on both sides, and bombings and mortarings was now almost routine for the Korean people near the border, with many story, horror stories on both sides. This war eventually ended on 1953, with the line being almost the exact same as before the war started, and separating millions of families across the borders. Once the war ended, though, North Korea was actually better off than South Korea at the time, and some outsiders considered it as a successful state, although it slowly started to turn into what it is today. Monuments of Kim Il-sung started to pop up in towns, and the state stated that it controls all the land. Then they started to control the media, restrict international transportation, and Kim Il-sung controlled the Workers' Party of Korea. He then implemented a system that would get rid of any opposing forces in North Korea, and as a result, massive inequality started to emerge in the country. The regime introduced the Sungbun system, which is still in place today. The system made people be put into classes, which determined people's school, where they live, and how they live. The regime silenced anyone who spoke against the regime by imprisoning them and their family for three generations, or just killing them all in public executions. This made everyone living in North Korea fear for their lives and untrusting of each other. And sometimes in the 1970s, North Korea lost its post-war reconstruction state, and its modernization was also lost. At the time, North Korea was highly dependent on Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc. 
Then sometime during the 1980s, the economy of the Soviet Union and Eastern Bloc declined. And then finally, the USSR collapsed in 1991, causing the economy of North Korea to stop working completely. This caused many things, such as famines in the 1990s that caused over 1 million people to die. Even after this famine ended, there were many people who were still suffering and caused the average height of North Koreans to go down immensely. In Barbara Demmerich's book, Nothing to Envy, a North Korean doctor tells of how even she became desperately hungry. After fleeing to China, she discovered a bowl of food left out for a dog. Upon examining the white rice and generous chunks of meat, she, she concluded that dogs in China ate better than doctors in North Korea. Eventually, Kim Il-sung died in 1994, June the 8th, and his son, Kim Jong-il, takes over. Kim Jong-il tightens the security at the border, making there half as many defectors going out of the country, and making the current status of North Korea more vague than it was before with a lot of information being given by reporters who have limited access of what they can see and where they are. Then when Kim Jong-il died in 2011, Kim Jong-un took control. Current day North Korea has more outside interactions in for North Korea recently. North Korea has been trading and importing some goods from China, but they're mostly souvenirs. There also has been a little bit of more interaction with other countries, such as the USA. But sadly, most of them end up as missile threats or other threats due to disagreements. There has been many events or discussions over how to include human rights into North Korea by the DPRK. But they have never really implemented them, since the ones that are thinking of implementing them are not the DPRK themselves, but other people from other nations, such as the U.S. and also the U.K. And there are still a lot of human rights violations in North Korea, and it has only been getting worse due to North Korea's doubling the security at the borders, and torture camp camps are still in effect with the same laws that have been going over 50 plus years. Also, North Korea and South Korea are officially still at war due to them both not signing a peace agreement. So, in conclusion, North Korea really needs to work on their human rights. Otherwise, more will go against North Korea, since it breaks human rights routinely. There also needs to be more open to the world around them. They also need to get rid of their very harsh laws, such as the prison camps, and their idea of totalitarianism. If they allow people to enter and leave their country without any restrictions, that would get rid of a lot of bad things in North Korea, but not all of them. They also need to allow the internet to the pub population, rather than having it only for the high officials and not filter the internet with propaganda. Also, the most important of it all is to allow freedom of speech for everyone in North Korea. If this is done, and stays in action, then North Korea will slowly, but surely, start to become a real country.